Warning, you're going to see something really, really cute. Oh, it's a prairie dog. Oh, look! Ooh, oh, no, that's not a prairie dog. That's a pretend camera one. <laughs> not very convincing. Now, what have the Jehovah's Witnesses got to do with prairie dogs? You already know this is going to be a disaster. You've got a little cute, cute, furry, innocent creature and Jehovah's Witnesses. What could possibly go wrong, I hear you ask? Well, Boulder in Colorado, that's what's gone wrong. Seems that prairie dogs are big news there. Obviously, they can be a pest sometimes. A lot of people love them. There's lots of arguments, it seems, back and forth. And when they're in the way in the wrong place, oh, look at them. <laughs> so cute um they are actually sort of gathering them them up and relocating them now the ways that they kill them outside the the town limits are quite barbaric it involves um first of all they explode put explosions down the burrows and tunnels and then for any that are left or dying they then whoosh fire through and then so little kids are seeing these poor little um prairie dogs on fire and screaming and running. So uh, obviously with uh, being sort of caretakers of the new system, Jehovah's Witnesses are going to have uh, an, affi uh, an affinity with nature and nature management. And a little, a little um, creature like this is going to be good practice for the pandas, isn't it? So here we have a daily newspaper for the area and as an opinion piece. Violence begets violence. Well, it can't, it can't be JW's. Peaceful lot. What's she got to say? She doesn't look happy. Recently, at another church, she decided to kill, kill prairie dogs in an empty field. This was the second time with a Jehovah's Witness congregation at the corner of J and Spine Road in Boulder County. When I asked why they did it the first time last summer, I was told people wanted to use the gazebo out in the field. I wonder what they feed the gazebo. <laughs> Never have I seen anyone even near that gazebo which sits way out in the field by itself, surrounded by weeds. Now they say they're, quote, helping the neighbours. A friend lives directly adjacent to the field and she has no idea what that means. When this happened before the church, quote, elder was provided with information on the importance of prairie dogs as a keystone species. Apparently it made no difference since they killed nearly an entire field of prairie dogs again. When I drove by the empty field after the killing, I saw only three small prairie dogs walking around, likely looking for their family and friends because they do live in, in a community. I think it's called a coterie. Um, tears came to my eyes and I felt a stab in my heart for them. What must they be feeling? Whether you like prairie dogs or not, you must admit there is something in Congress about a, quote, church randomly killing an entire field of animals of any species. Shame on them. I know nothing about the Jehovah's Witnesses' religion, but perhaps they don't believe in the same God that many people do. No, they don't, actually. No, you're right. A God of love, compassion, goodness, concern, and respect for all beings on this earth. Well, you, you, cracked that, you cracked it there, girl. The God I know would never randomly kill animals. The flood? The flood? Um, and I'm sure in Sodom and Gomorrah, surely there was like, you know, all their animals and their pets and lives. Oh, dear. And then, of course, there's the sacrificing of animals, wasn't there? So, I don't know. And would not condone having it done by humans. I've begun to believe that some, quote, religions are just a pretense to convince others that they believe in a true God. I do believe that we will never find peace with other humans as long as we can't find peace with other species. Interesting point. Violence toward anyone, human or non-human, is simply wrong. It begets more violence toward all. Well, she got that off her chest, didn't she? So this got me wondering, is that normal policy to kill prairie dogs? You know, is there something in in the Old Testament? Because there won't be anything about the New Testament pretty much, will it? It's always the Old Testament. So maybe there was something, you know, that um, the Israelites were instructed to do with prairie dogs. 
um, probably don't dress them up in human clothes, but um, yeah, they might they might be something. They might be seen as an unclean um, animal or something. Um, looking at that one there, I think it's, it's vile, vile creature. So I did look up the Watchtower Online Library, and in 1986, this font of all wisdom in Canada, they did have a have a word with us about that varmint known as the prairie dog. Actually, she's wearing jewellery there, I think. That's a bit bit showy, bit showy, and you need a bit of shave, I think. A bit too much hair if you're going to go down the Kingdom Hall. Maybe that's why they don't like them, because they're just too hairy, and that's a bit of a, you know, So here top, we have really. it. Meet the social-minded prairie dog from Awake! Exclamation mark, 1986. So they admit that they're social-minded, so that makes it even worse that there were just three little lonely ones left. So they talked about how there were so many across the 1930s all over the place and about what was going on. and So they're normally called a gopher. I hadn't realised before they're the same, but that makes sense. Of course, it talks about the noise, not really a dog, more like a little squirrel thing. Oh. Um, so it talks about the life cycle, how much they eat, the noise they make. Um, it's not a true hi- hibernator. You see some great big fat ones online. They're hilarious. Um, social-minded prairie dog provokes urban life. How fine, how fine that it has a natural talent for town planning. Close-knit groups called coteries, see, told you, <laughs> share a network of burrows and underground runways. Oh, and how they live together. And Wow, one of these became a mega city. 400 million inhabitants wow and a century ago these prairie dogs stretched from southern alberta and saskatchewan down into mexico so they get along well and dominant dominant males challenge intruders hmm. Hmm. i don't know who that reminds me of hmm. <laughs> loyal ma- and the loyal mate standing nearby but keeping quiet i suppose loyal mate if it's a female um so, time engineers are blah 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 blah. Anyway, so great. Oh, his enemies, his enemies. Whoa. About the natural balance and like many other things that that was destroyed once. Um, yep, wolves and the rest. That whole uh, e- ecological balance got got interfered with. But now man, man has become the prairie dog's most dangerous enemy. Probably, particularly men in suits. I think. What do you think, Alan? I've just got to call Alan over here. Alan, yeah, okay, we we'll get you we'll get you over here in a minute, okay? Yeah, Alan, we'll get you over here in a minute because yeah, I want you to have all, like, he's going to have something very important to say. So they're talking about poisoning and how they've really shrunk pest or useful work or it's you know it's now positive. Little creature was unfairly charged. Ah, oh. oh, so it wasn't his fault at all. Um, no, no, only a few isolated pockets of prairie dogs remain. Oh, perhaps you've seen them in protected areas or in a zoo. These animals are sure to attract and entertain you. Alan? Yeah, okay, well, hang on after this because he's going to have a, a really, really knowledgeable word with you about this. Um, about this fascinating little creature's instinctive wisdom, unique society, enjoyment of life, and place in the Earth's ecology will teach us not to be quick about judging such animals as unworthy of life. Rather, may we see in them a reflection of a far greater wisdom that operates for the common good. So, those J-dubs in um, Boulder... Colorado, they went against the Awake magazine. <sighs> Don't be quick about judging such animals as unworthy of life. Now that's come, that's come from your governing body, which is the same as Jesus telling you. You know that. So you're naughty, naughty, naughty boys and girls. I don't know what they've done this year. But um, anyway, so uh, I'm going to get the expert. If we can, we're just going to find him. Hold on a minute because he's coming along. Yeah. Okay, we're sending. Nice day today. I think I might turn. Uh... Is that Alan? Alan! Al! Alan! Uh, no, I don't think you can hear me, you know. No. Alan! 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 Al! Alan! 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 
Alan! Alan! Alan! No, oh, that's not Alan. Steve, that's no, Steve. Steve! 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 Oh, no, that's not Steve, that is Alan. Alan! Alan! Al! Alan! 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 Did someone just say my name? Hey! 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 You say Alan!